Okay, here we are. It's turn one of the Ice West game. Stellar Warfare mod. 1v1 situation. Me versus Ed Colas, the guy who made the mod. And we have two empires. The Abaddon, he took a default name. And me, the Zemp Garans. See, it's a small assist mod. And I have taken Asteroids as my homeworld type. Which is a valid, quote-unquote, planner type in this mod. And then we actually start with a uh, higher resource percentage than is normal. And yeah, the research values in this mod are uh, much lower. Much lower, but the researches cost much less. Oh yeah, scrolling on the side to disable that. I don't like that very much. I usually play just in the default view, locked all the time. That way it's easier to keep your bearings when you're switching between systems. Yeah, research is much cheaper, only costs like a couple hundred points each, but you get much less. You start with a thousand points more than you produce, like usual. And the first thing I want to research is power or propulsion, but I think power for these large chemical reactors and nuclear reactors, which give you a movement bonus. Because if you don't have them, your ships are going to be very slow, which is something we're going to see. Uh, once we start designing our first chips. So how much do we need? 41 here um, pro tip if you just put 1% research in a in a research field you can see it says uh, 4.1 years which is 41 turns which means 41% research are going to be just enough to research it in one turn. Sometimes there's a little bit of a rounding error in this case you can actually th take 3% less but usually it's pretty accurate. So, what else do we want to research? I think we're going to design most of the ships on turn 2 once we have this, uh, these better engines unlocked or these better reactors. This mod, you don't just have engines, you have reactors which make supplies and give you a speed bonus and then actual engines or thrusters. Pulsion just gives me small thrusters. It's been ages since I last played this mod and I didn't play it too extensively, so I just looked at it for half an hour earlier today to refamiliarize myself with some of these systems so I have a little bit of an idea what's going on. Hmm. Still not entirely sure what else I want. Pretty sure I want nuclear physics for the better sensors. I've researched sensors too, but I don't think that actually gave me better sensors. I think you need physics and sensors to unlock sensors. And there's also a radar station, a sensor building you can put on planets. If you want to uh, invest your facility space on that, it's your choice, but Generally, uh, I prefer mines and research centers. I prefer to have radar arrays and such on satellites or stations. Uh, but I think they actually scan a much better range and levels. So what else do we want? Hmm. You know, at the start we have very, uh, very uh, limited ships, ships have very limited capabilities, ships that are very small, ships that are very slow. So I think our first order of business is going to be undoing that and getting better ships. And for that we have to research planetary industry. Here you can see the ship hulls are going to be unlocked once we research this. And we don't actually have quite enough research point to also research this, but um, we might be able to do this in turn 3 or 4. Okay, that's the research for our turn. Then, what does a homeworld actually look like? The facilities in this game are quite a bit different than they are in Vanilla. You have these uh, cities, metropolises, which uh, generate resources, kind of like a monolith facility. They, they research, uh, they don't research, they generate resources equally. And they also provide a little bit of storage, which most of these facilities do, which I actually quite like, instead of having dedicated storage facilities. And also uh, produce supply and ordnance. Instead of using dedicated supply depots again. Then we have the capital facility, which is just a general buff for your home world, provides you with base storage, makes your home world 50% uh, better at mining. Half maintenance, gives you a little bit of combat bony in the entire system actually, and a base happiness bonus, I guess. Don't think you can build this thing. Legacy infrastructure, it took centuries to build. If you lose it, you can't replace it. Doesn't have any resource cost, so it's probably not uh, buildable for us. 
We have one of these radar stations here that takes ships within two sectors, <laughs> which is not very far. <laughs> oh, to hit rolls increased by two in the sector and system right decloaks, uh, detects cloaked ship up to cloak level two. System right. Hmm. It's interesting that's a, that that is a system right ability, not just for the uh, radius of the sensor. And also provides you with long range scanners. Ships in this system can be scanned in detail. So maybe these radar stations do have some merit to them. Then we have a hospital which is largely unchanged from vanilla, just uh, basic plague prevention and a small reproduction bonus. Research labs are unchanged from vanilla except for different costs and they generate a lot less research points now. Then we have the planetary fortification, which uh, sort of work like a ship and fleet training facilities and a storage facility. And I guess it also gives you a ground combat damage bonus, so well, that's interesting. I like that a lot more than the uh, storage facilities that you can build in vanilla or vanilla-like. And then we have the space dock, which is your space, yeah, a space port. Distributes supplies, oh, has that function of the uh, resupply depot then, okay. And actually repairs some of your stuff, that's nice. Doesn't actually build anything, just repairs. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, and then we have space yard. Oh, yeah, another thing to note, not every, not every facility here actually is 1000 kilotons in size. The heavy space yard, for instance, is 5000 kilotons, I noticed that. Um, so it's five the size of what a regular facility would be. Yeah, it's 5,000 kilotons and there's also light shipyards which produce 200, which have a production rate of 200 per resource and heavy shipyards have 1,200 per resource. So they're six times as fast but uh, light shipyards are 2,000 size, so two facility slots and heavy shipyards are 5,000 size. So heavy shipyards are much more efficient. But I think if you want to start building shipyards on a planet, uh, the base construction rate is really low, if I remember correctly. So you'll s you'll want to start with a light shipyard and then, or two maybe, and then build a heavy shipyard, which is going to take forever, at two or four hundred resources per turn, and eventually uh, finish building one of these. So yeah, this is game is going to be much different, much much different from vanilla stock or balance mod or anything that builds upon them and doesn't change things too much. And we have half the planet empty yet. So we can decide, do we want to start building ships, scouts, colonizers, warships even? Or do we want to fill up our planet and uh, get better, build more research labs, build 20 research labs? Hey, it's going to more than triple our income, is it? We have what, three research labs? Yeah. Do we want to build more shipyards? Beat anybody in submission? Oh, lots of possibilities. Oh yeah, and we also have solar plants available. Produce radioactives per star. And stores radioactives. So that is actually a dedicated production facility as opposed to the metropolises which produce everything. And the metropolis produces 240 of each type and this one produces 480 of this type per star. And it also does some... Uh, Supply, generation, ah yeah, not distribution, just generation and storage. Okay, we do actually have another asteroid field, which is now colonizable and technically a planet with an asteroid picture. In the system, with, uh, I don't know if that's good resource or not. Oh yeah, it looks like planets also have resources in the 200 something ranges now in this mod. And it's uh, tiny though. I'm not exactly sure if we're gonna get 5 or 10 spaces on here. Hmm. Also I'm not sure if the asteroids can have atmospheres. I just picked non-type atmosphere for my home world because I figured that's what <laughs> would be most logical for asteroids. Uh, mm -hmm. Oxygen, non carbon dioxide, otherwise it looks pretty standard. So the map is small, we don't see it yet. We have two war points in our home system. Let's get into ship design. So we have ships available. We have three basic size classes. Destroyers as small warships, the cruisers as medium warships and freighters. 
uh, which is a sucker combat, Couldn't, can't really be used as warships, but we're going to need to use these as colony ships. Ah, yeah. Something else you'll see here is that the crew requirements are dynamic for these ships. You don't actually need all these requirements, only one of them is, these is active at a time. Depending on what um, depending on what components you put in your ship, they require more or less crew to operate, and then you have a dynamic crew requirement. It's actually one of the really cool features of this mod. So, requires at least one control center. So we have two bridges available. This is the regular bridge, or the warship bridge. I already looked at this earlier, so I know this one has more structure, can be placed on the inner hull, whereas the other one can't. It requires twice the crew and is more expensive. But uh, since we want to build a colony ship, we are going to just take the command center, the cheap bridge. And you can already see vehicle requires additional crew, 6 to 10 to operate its internal systems. And you have these small and these large crew quarters. The small ones give you 5 crew, the large ones give you 100 crew. And they are 2 and 30 kilotons respectively. So if you were to use uh, 30 kilotons of small crew quarters, you would just get 750, uh, 75 crew instead of 100 for them. So these large ones are definitely more efficient. Oops, these large ones, yes. I th think they might be more resource efficient too. So, what do we need? Colony ship needs a colony, that's 300 kilotons. Requires 300 crew, the requirement just went up, but it does not actually have any cargo requirement. Any cargo capacity, but uh, in order to meet the cargo bay requirement of the freighter ship, we are going to need a cargo bay, which is conveniently sized 100 kilotons. Provides 100 kilotons worth of cargo space too. Well, I don't think that number has been increased from default. And with this we have the basic requirements for our ship done. No, we need engines. We have these medium thrusters. They produce thrust and uh, use supply. Also store a little bit of supply and uh, then they increase the crew requirement. So, watch this. Movement, zero. Watch how many of these medium thrusters, which are 10 kilotons each, I need to put on this ship before we get our first movement speed. In case you don't want to count, that is 6, 7, and the other half it's 14. That is 140 kilotons worth of engines. We could put another 140 kilotons worth of engines here and be at uh, 2 movement speed. But um, hmm. I don't think we'll have enough space to put anything else on the ship then, like the crew quarters which we're going to need, or these chemical reactors, which we are going to need to actually power these things. And they require 15 supply, quick calculation, 14 engines times 15 supply is 210 supplies per tile. And just these things alone, with their 25 supply storage, would get us four tiles far. That's not even far enough to get us out of the system or halfway through it. So, in come the chemical reactors. They're a little bit similar to the uh, quantum reactors from Vanilla, in that they just produce supply as their main uh, budos, and they also store some. So we use 210 supply per tile, and these produce 50. So if we put four of these on, we can put these on the internal slots, the thrusters we can't. Then we're going to produce 200 supply a turn and use 210 if we fly at full speed and uh, we have like 3k supply capacity, so the 10 shortfall can be made up there quite easily. So we have 150 kilotons left, that is um, barely enough to fit the 140 kilotons of thrusters we would need to get us to movement speed 2. Or, you know, we could uh, use that space to actually use uh, putting crew quarters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need one more. You can pr uh, yeah, we're almost full with that. Uh, we could probably make do with the smaller ones, with between 21 and 75. I think it's actually more efficient to just use another one of these. I think when I tried building a colony ship earlier, I ended up with the same design and... Uh, it ended up being the same, whether you use large or small ones for this one. So, this is a basic colony ship. Next turn, we're going to replace these chemical reactors with nuclear reactors, which have the contraterrene graphics icon. 
which are actually going to give us a one speed bonus, I think. And then the ship will go at two speed. We're not going to actually build this this turn. We're just going to upgrade this next one. Uh, give it a name. Oh, I, I picked the uh, diseases design list. Uh, you are what the f gonorrhea. Yeah, you are gonorrhea. If that gonorrhea, if that is even how you pronounce this. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is, the illness of the butt, it's scratchy, right? I'm not sure I want to know, honestly. <laughs> Who comes up with these design name lists, anyway? Design type, asteroids, and the ship's done. Let's see what we have available for warships or scouts. Again, we have the small ones and the medium ones. If you want to build a scout, you probably want a small one. And what would we need in order to make one even just basically uh, self-sufficient? We're definitely going to want a reactor because we need uh, supply generation. We also have supply tanks, but uh, they store 100 supplies for 5 kilotons, which I don't think gets us very far if each of these medium thrusters requires 15 per. And we need how many medium thrusters? Two to give us one mov movement tile. And these things... Um, are still 10 kilotons each and this ship has a 100 kiloton size. So let's just take um, two of these thrusters, which is 30 supplies a turn, which is uh, something that this thing can make. So it makes 50. Mm, put in a sensor. Fun fact, right edition sensor one level one only has one sector distance, which I'm pretty sure all ships get anyway. I think it's configurable in the mod, but um, it isn't really worth putting anything on there, I don't think. <laughs> it's not really worth putting a level a level 1 sensor that only sweeps at one sector distance on. So I think we're also going to forego building any scout ships that move at speed 1 and scan at one range for the time being. It's just not even built this. What else do we have available? We have these gunboats, which are an interesting step in between uh, fighters and frigates, or whatever the small ships are called. Um, they get these, these regular, these uh, bridges that uh, reduce crew requirements by 50% or so. Well, you can apparently put them on the inside too. Oh, well, you can put multiples on this, oh, I guess. And they get um, over thrust amounts, which make the thrusters half sized but they take more supply uh, half integrity half size but take twice as much supply which means they are not as good at uh, traveling distance so mm. Let's see if we were to use two of these then we actually have movement to speed two that's twenty percent of the ship oh yeah, I haven't gone into these weapon mounts yet they um, are actually quite configurable. If you research them properly, then the artillery mounts, for instance, are going to give you quite long-range weapons. And oh, apparently quite accurate ones as well. The battery mounts make them just smaller. So you can fit more of them on a medium-sized ship. The bombardment mounts are for missiles, I believe. Yeah, they're for missiles. They make them smaller. I think they are, they are for fighters and gunboats. So if we can take one of our level 2 torpedoes that we started with. Mm, yeah, looks pretty looks pretty good actually. 100 something damage. Let's just say like 80 damage by default. The range is quite big. The uh, uh, the damage range is quite big. The actual range is capped at 50 which is actually not very high for a missile weapon. At least it would be in vanilla in this game. The ranges are all a little bit different. They are short and if, if I remember correctly, I remember it saying that he reduced the combat arena um, by 10 times as opposed to vanilla or balance mod. So could we make a defense ship that we can just put on our planet so that it doesn't get conquered by turn 7 or so? Hmm, what else does it need? Needs crew quarters, but I think we can uh, we can do those. Yeah, we still have 20, 12 kilotons left. What do you look like for ordnance? You store 50 ordnance and use 25 per shot. 
Yeah, that's not enough for two shots. We think we want a little more there. How much do you store? 30. That's a single missile. <laughs> 100. Mm, that's four missiles. Okay. Let's have this. Then this thing has six missiles it can shoot. They actually do a lot of damage. So I'm not terribly concerned with that. And let's put some armor on these. Oh, they have, I'm guessing higher level, higher level versions are going to have uh, a missive ability. They're going to have 10 structure per kiloton. So just put 7 of these on here, I guess. Da, 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 da. Not sure if he has armor mounts or just bigger plates later. And then this thing is going to have 70 armor, 6 missiles of however much speed. And, um, ah, right. Two thrusters that each use 30 supply and a supply capacity of 50, <laughs> which means this thing can't actually move. <laughs> it can't uh, enter another sector. It can sit on our homeworld if it wants to and uh, defend there and fight, uh, fight around there and probably be pretty fast because the ship size gets a bonus to combat speed. But um, it won't actually be going anywhere. Unless you can put these things to carriers, I'm not sure about that. So, these things can have like 40 range, so let's set it to, f you want to stay at 40 range. There's several um, strategies. Actually, let's set it to guard colony at 40 range, since this thing's never going to actually attack anybody. Not sure what the behavior is going to be if you were to deploy these elsewhere with a carrier, if that's indeed a thing, and then have that strategy set, but I'm guessing there will will not not shoot. Mm, what terrible name shall we give this thing? Ill. Yeah. Diseases usually make you ill. Mm, inflammation, yes. Yes. Sounds fun. Design type Base Guardian, Colony Guardian. Yeah, that would be your job. And there's actual fighters, which are ten kilotons. And bases are 800, same size as a uh, same size as a freighter. Maintenance reduction of 60%. Oh, so they're actually reasonably cheap to maintain. Huh? It looks like what 15% of the resource cost is maintenance. How much do the ships have? A freighter, well, 24. That's definitely more. These have a 20% bonus. So I guess by default they have, what, 30? Hmm. Not entirely sure. No, so something that's hard-coded into Space Empires 5. You need to have a troop design in order for your planets to spawn troops when you get invaded, the militia troops. If you don't have a design, then no troops will spawn, so you should always make one on the first turn. And generally, always keep them up to date. So the troops here are big again, in order to uh, prevent troop spam, or rather slowdowns in the game with thousands and thousands of troop units, and they're, they're just bigger so that you can build less of them. Because thousands and thousands of troops uh, take long times to process, crash the game, whereas tens and tens of troops are quite manageable. So they have these four control center uh, generals. And each of them gives you a different uh, gives you a different ability in a sense. The defensive ones aren't as fast, but they have an emissive ability. The medical ones regenerate damage. The aggressive ones are the fastest and they might have a damage bonus. 10% weapon damage bonus. And the skirmish ones are the fastest. They have to hit and to dodge bonus. So I think I'm going to go with the skirmisher type and missiles if we had any does not look like missiles are going to be a thing in ground combat. Okay, let's not go with this one. Let's go with the damage one. Hmm. We'll see if we go with the damage one or the defense one. Fusion warhead. Oh, not sure if I could even use these or if I need the... Ah, oh, no, 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 I would need the trade for that. Interesting. Kamikaze armies. So we basically have the choice between a mass driver, which does 30 damage, at a decentish range, plus 30 kilotons. Or the auto cannon, which is bigger, but it shoots a lot more often. 
I think the total damage isn't as high, and if you take the uh, defensive admiral, which has the nullification, which I probably should do, then autocans are going to be much less useful. And then there's PD autocans, which, oh my, shoot 10 times a second. That's quite a lot. Oh yeah, this is another mount. This uh, increases the damage, but uh, reduces accuracy. The carronade. But I think we just want general battery mount in order to fit more weapons and put one or two auto cannons on here. Let's see. Maybe we'll even be able to fit a third. Oh, we still only have the one kiloton armors available. That's annoying. Probably want a few of these on here. It doesn't need any engines. The uh, speed is determined by the command type. Hmm. How much ammunition do these use? 10 ordnance per shot, so 20 ordnance in 3 seconds. Each of these stores 50 ordnance. So that's enough for 15 seconds of firing. Total ca ordnance capacity is 100. Yeah, let's increase that a little bit. So with this it's going to be 30 seconds of firing. It sounds fine. Hmm. How about we put in a third weapon, since so we have the tonnage for it, put two of these in here, then we have 350 ordnance, and we're going to require 30 ordnance in 3 seconds, or 10 ordnance per second, which makes this 35 seconds of continuous fire, which seems good enough for me. And um, do we have to worry about supply usage? No. We have 50 supply, we use 35, and the uh, movement doesn't actually cost anything. Because we don't move through hexes in ground combat. Oh, do we want a PD autocan instead, perhaps? No, wait. If we don't have any missiles, then the enemy's probably not going to have any either. Who knows if there's going to be missiles on the ground later, but there certainly isn't level 2 torpedoes available. Okay, let's just fill the rest of the space with armor then and call out the troop. And that's eight, so one more troop needs to go on the lower decks. Mm, what terrible name shall we give this thing? Um, taken in, tainted, speaking, syphilis. Ah oh yes, everyone knows, syph knows syphilis. Set strategy, I guess this is also best set at guard colony, huh? <laughs> is 40 kilometers the proper range for this as well? Uh, yes. So, interesting about this mod is it has a best range for a weapon and if you're outside of the optimal range for that specific weapon, your accuracy actually goes down. So, if somebody closes in on you on this thing, uh, they can make you miss more often because you are best at uh, fighting enemies at 40 range. And you are set to 40 range. And we should give you a design type. Troop, 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 troop. Are you called an army? No. Base guardian, colony guardian. I guess we could call you a colony guardian. It's not like you show up in the same category. Wait, you do. Wait, you do. Yeah, they both show up as colony guardians. Now. They look relatively <laughs> similar to now. I have to take care which one of these is the space thingy and which one of these is the army. Okay, since we've decided we weren't going to build any ships this turn, um, we should decide if we're going to build facilities or maybe a space yard. Do we even have space yards available? Let's check out the base. Mm, no, we have repair base available. But not space yards proper. Oh, hang on, I have cargo space. I think this have just as much car ma just as much cargo space as cru as cargo base, interestingly. They're a little bit more expensive. Medical bay, cures plagues, okay. Radar array is level two, it's not going to give me any benefit if I put that in a static ship. Hmm. Fusion bombs are just like the um, uh, not nuclear bombs. The bombardment thing is you get in vanilla. 
so I guess there's no point in building a base so let's just use our turn and our 2.3k construction in building a facility maybe several I think our resource situation is still going to be fine since we don't actually have anything consuming resource in the resources yet aside from the few facilities that we have so let's just build more research facilities how many research facilities can we build? 2 to 80 divided by 300 is 7.6 research facilities so let's just make 8 and we're going to have a little bit of overflow on the next turn but we won't waste anything this one and 8 times 8 should give us at least 64 more research plus whatever bony the plant gives us from happiness and amount increase production but 160 percent yeah so it's definitely going to be more than 100 something and that's it for the first turn first turn usually takes the longest I'm anticipating that the next 20 or so will not take as long as this one but we'll see maybe we'll encounter somebody pretty soon and that somebody is the only other player in this game the map is not very big but ships are going to be slow we'll see